Please put your hands together and welcome Mr. Lon Safko. Holy moly. <laughs> Thank you very much. Jeez. How about that? He did his homework. Holy moly. How you doing? Okay, one guy in the middle. He gets the points. How you doing? Okay, good, good. That's, that's what I want to hear. Okay. Yeah, thanks for hanging out, man, sticking it out. Everybody else is on planes back to nowhere, and you guys are here. We're going to talk about fusion marketing. Let me tell you how we got here and what you're going to get out of this. Is anybody having trouble wrapping their brain around how do you mix social media, digital media, traditional marketing, and put it all together so that it makes sense and it kind of works together? That's really what's perplexed me. I'm the author of the Social Media Bible. I'm really proud to say that. It's a 400-page book. It's the largest book ever written on social media. And uh, it's about to break the $1 million sales mark, which I'm very proud of. And I do a lot of radio interviews. And it's inevitable at the very last interview, uh, the, the last part of the interview, when we approach the top of the hour, we say, now we're going to go to commercial break. And when we get back, Lon's going to tell us, what comes next? What's after social media? And I was like, are you kidding me? What comes after social media? Social media changed our lives. We're just starting to get into the, really into social media. And just because I, I can see trends, you think I'm going to tell you what's going to happen after social media. But I took that on as a personal challenge. And I'm usually pretty good at determining if this is where we were and this is where we are, this is where we're going to be. So the challenge was, is to try to figure out where we're going to be. How are we going to be using social media, traditional marketing, and integrate that in such a way where we're going to basically be in five years. So that's what you're going to see here today. It's called fusion marketing. And yes, it does build off of the success of the social media Bible. All of us are familiar with traditional marketing. I'm going to even show you that. That's my bio. I'm already embarrassed about what you've already heard. The concept that I'm going to share with you today, fusion marketing, is so unique and so powerful that the United States Patent Office has awarded it a patent pending. All that means is, is that please, trust me when I tell you that this is where we're going to be five years from now, and if you can embrace this, you're going to have a competitive edge over everyone else that's doing marketing. Here's an old saying, you probably heard it said before, I know that half of my advertising isn't working, I just don't know which half. You heard that a hundred times, and it kind of makes us smile when we say that, but the reality is it's not something to laugh about. We do know that 50% of our advertising isn't working for a darn, but we don't know which half. By the end of this presentation, I'm going to show you how to determine which half and how to actually make it better. A lot of people think that it was Ogilvy who, or Wanamaker who actually said this. Uh, it's actually Lord Leverhulme. Anybody a big fan? Him and his brother actually started a company called Lever Brothers. Just tossing that out there. You're going to have a cocktail reception, and if anybody isn't at the presentation, you can throw that out and look like you're really smart. Here's the top 20 things that we do in traditional marketing. And as auto dealers, that's what we've done. We've done that our entire career. We're comfortable with it. We do newspaper advertising because we're comfortable with it. Most of us don't know how effective or how ineffective newspaper advertising is, but we've always done it. And when you don't think it's effective, usually what you do is you throw more money at it. That, that's not the best solution. And these are the things that we grew up with. So when I was trying to figure out where we were going to be, the first thing that I did is I wanted to take a serious look at where we were. Where were we before 2004 when the only type of marketing we had was traditional? So those are the top 20 things. And th the reason for this slide and that big red arrow is, is that I want you to understand something that's critically important. If there's anything that you're doing in marketing that doesn't directly lead to revenue, then stop it. You're here today spending this money to be here to learn from the industry experts because you know that you can go back and you can apply one, two, three, four different ideas that you've heard here and you can convert it to revenue. And that revenue has to be equal to or greater than the amount of money that you spent to get here. Right? I mean, you know that. Verbalize it in your head because it's critical. Everything that you do needs to lead directly to revenue. And if you can't account for it leading to revenue, then just simply don't do it. So I'm going to start with the top 20 things that we do, and that was a list of them. Now I want to set another critical concept here. 
Social media. Social media, digital marketing, very, very important. We have to do it. There is no choice. All of us, and I'm sure you're guilty of it too, were hoping that social media was going to be a fad, that it was going to be like Web 2.0, which to this day we still don't know what the heck that is. And we were all hoping that it was going to kind of go away and leave us alone and let us do what we felt comfortable doing. And the reality is, is that it's not going to go away. It's actually going to morph into something that's even significantly more important. That's what you're going to learn here today. And one of the things that I realized, even though I wrote the most comprehensive book in the world on social media, I still don't want to call myself a social media guru because the industry is changing. A couple of years ago, Pinterest didn't exist. It's critical. Instagram didn't exist. Now it's critical. We have to stay very flexible as we watch what happens in social media. But the fact is, is that if you call yourself a social media expert, you're announcing to the world that you've been left behind. Because it's not just about social media. Now let me give you an example. Billboards. How many people here watch Mad Men? Mad Men. One, two, three. If you're in marketing and you don't watch Mad Men, you got any words of advice for the rest of the audience? I mean, it, 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 that was the foundation of marketing. I mean, yeah, there's a whole lot of drama and nonsense that goes on, but it really it does show how it grew. What's the guy's name? What's the character's name who does, uh, he's the vice president of television advertising? Dark hair, heavy set, drinks too much, smokes. Wait a minute, that, you'll never figure it out by that description. There once was a time when every company, every marketing agency needed somebody to be in charge of television advertising. Because it was a new field, it was a new industry. Nobody really understood how it worked, but they did know that it was an effective form of marketing. We don't have vice presidents of television advertising anymore. And the fact is, is that if I asked to speak to your vice president of television advertising, you would think that I've lost my mind taking a sharp blow to my head. Because it, it just doesn't make sense. So if you believe what I just said there, then you also got to understand that five years from now, if you've got a vice president of social media, it's going to sound equally ridiculous. And the reason is, is that everything that we do in marketing is a form of communication that allows us to communicate with our customers and our prospects Ultimately, building a relationship, a relationship of trust, because trust converts to revenue. Anybody disagree with that? So what we're going to see over the next couple of years is there's not going to be any such thing as a social media expert or a vice president of social media or I handle the social media. It's marketing. It's just marketing. Yes, it uses a different set of tools. For the first time in history, it's electronic, it's digital, and it's two-way communication. And that's what's freaking everybody out, from agencies right down to the small mom and pop marketing companies, is that for the first time in history, we can no longer be comfortable with push marketing. We throw stuff out, we keep our fingers crossed, and if it doesn't work, we try to do twice as much of it. That doesn't work anymore. Now it's about building relationships. Your website is critical, and at the same time, it's irrelevant. Because I don't care what you have to say about yourself on your website, because I know that 99% of it's not true. Because we all do that. Oh, we're the world leading industry and in leading industries and in delivering industries and in leadership of leading. <laughs> what are those mission statements? I'm gonna go check you out on Yelp. And if I can find five people that give a good review, I'm going to buy a car from you guys. And if I, if I find five bad reviews, I don't care. I won't even look at your website, and I'll never step foot on your lot. That's the difference. That's how marketing has changed. It's moved from one-way push to two-way. Now, also, as we get into this presentation, I want you to be able to differentiate the difference between digital marketing and social media marketing. Digital is still electronic. It requires an iPad, a tablet, an iPhone, any kind of a smartphone, internet access, but digital does not require two-way communication. Think about it for a second. Facebook, two-way communication with your customers and prospects. Um, LinkedIn, two-way communication. Twitter, two-way communication. What about pay-per-click? What about search engine optimization? That doesn't even imply communication, but it's absolutely necessary. Okay, so this is the, that other critical concept I want you to differentiate between digital marketing and social marketing. Digital is electronic, but it doesn't have two-way communication. Social requires two ways. That makes sense? Okay, and I'm setting the groundwork for what you're about to see here so that what I, when I explain it to you, it kind of makes sense. Now, here's another revelation because, again, I always look at where we were, where we are, and for me, it's easy. I can say this is where we're going to be. Now, for 6,000 years, we've been marketing. 
And we've been doing it pretty much the same way with this kind of a push sort of a technology. 6,000 years ago, we were out in the desert, we stood up on a, a big giant rock, we cupped our hands and we said, buy our goats. And then we started talking about the features and benefits of buying one of my goats. Keeps you warm at night, gives you cheese, you could milk it, they purr, I don't know. You, you can shave them and make a coat out of them. And then when that marketing message failed to sell goats from the rock, what did we do? We went back into the marketing tent, we recrafted that message, and tomorrow morning we got back up on the rock and we started shouting again, hoping that that marketing message was more effective than it was yesterday. Or you went and you killed the competition. But every form of communication that we've ever invented, first we invented it for communicating, secondly, us marketers turned it into a marketing tool. Uh, let's jump ahead. I'm not going to take you through all 6,000 years because there's a cocktail party that we all want to go to. But the Gutenberg invented the printing press. He invented movable print. Uh, he was a big deal and he did that so that he can reproduce the biggest selling book at the time. Not the social media Bible, but the Holy Bible. And he did that so he can reduce the cost and sell a lot of books. Now one thing for sure, I've never found any proof of this, but I guarantee you the day that Gutenberg had a, a warehouse full of printed Bibles, the second piece of information he printed was a marketing sheet so that he could sell his Bibles. He then changed from being a printer into a marketer. And that's what you guys are. If you're going to be competitive, you're not just car dealers. You have to be expert marketing people because the competition is brutal. So I just want you to keep in mind, somebody invents something called Pinterest. I have no interest in Pinterest, but I know that my prospects and customers do, and if I'm going to communicate with them, it's not about me. It's about being where my customers and prospects are. So I participate in it. And when Instagram came out, I was lukewarm on it, but I use it because that's where my customers and prospects are. So this slide, I, what I want you to walk away with, and I'm sorry to say this, it's not about you. It's about where your customers are. If they're on Facebook, you need to be on Facebook. If they're going to check out your profile on LinkedIn, you better have a good profile on LinkedIn. Any tools that we use for communication, even tools that hasn't been invented yet, when a new tool comes out, if you're the first one to learn how to use that tool for marketing, you're going to have a competitive advantage. Does that make sense? You guys doing all right? I want to see happy faces. Okay, there we go. I'm good. Okay, we'll change slides. Here we go. I was working with the CEO of a company and I was doing some training for his company and him and I sat down and he asked me to meet with him ahead of time for breakfast so that I could explain to him what social media was. So the first thing I did is I sat down at the table, we ordered our Grand Slam or whatever the heck it was, and I took my three and a half pound, 400 page book and I dropped it onto the table. I didn't place it on the table, I dropped it for effect, a three pound book hitting the table before he had his coffee made an effect on him. And I said, if you think that I'm going to be able to relay all of this information over bacon and eggs, it's not going to work. So he says, well, just give me the highlights. It's like, okay, I'll do the best I can. Five minutes into it, I could tell that the lights were on, nobody was home. I don't know where he was, but he wasn't at that table. I can tell just by the way he was looking at me. So I said, dude, I, I spent time in San Diego, so that was dude. Dude, where are you, man? So he says, you know what? He says, I'm a visual learner, I'm not an audio learner. You lost me at social media. It's like, okay, well, how are we going to fix that? He says, do you have an image of what social media is? And I said, I don't. I said, some of the world's best selling authors have been trying to come up with what does social media actually look like? What is this beast, this elephant that we're trying to eat one bite at a time? And nobody's been able to come up with anything. The, the, the best one is like these multicolored feathers, like peacock feathers on a wheel that just has random nonsense on it. But it's pretty because it's multicolored. So, I told him, I said, I haven't been able to do it. I've been trying to do it for my books. But I'll tell you what, I'll take it on as a challenge. And if I could figure out how to give you an image of what social media looks like, I'll call you back. But if you don't hear from me, don't be surprised. It's nothing personal. So I went back to my computer. I'm telling you, this is how inspiration just kind of happens. It was a 10, 10 o'clock on a Wednesday morning. And I drew this image. And what I realized was, is that this guy had been doing traditional marketing his entire life. He knew it, he knew it cold. He knows what a door hanger is and what a newspaper ad and what business cards are. So what I figured was is the social media Bible has 20 major categories of social media. Everything from virtual worlds to in-game advertising and a lot of other things that you probably never even heard of. 
And I thought, if I start with the 20 top things in traditional, he'll relate to it, and then I can just switch the pictures when he wasn't looking at social media, and maybe he won't notice that I switched it, and he'll figure out what I'm talking about. So here's the top 20 things that we all do. And when I completed this image on my computer, I looked at it, and my first instinct was, wow, that really sucks. That's no better than what everybody else has been doing. Matter of fact, it's not as pretty because I don't have multicolored peacock feathers on it. But I looked at it here for a second because the way my brain works, which is probably because I fell and hit my head as a young child, is that I assumed if I had gone through the trouble to create this, there must be something good in it. There may be, there actually is something that I'm not seeing. What if I was to make that assumption? The first thing that popped out of it is, holy crud, that's everything that I've been doing my career in traditional marketing, all in one big picture. That to me was a revelation. I never saw everything that I can do in one image. I do what everybody else does with my companies. I, I'm, I'm currently president and CEO of three companies. So what do I do? The same thing I did last year, but I try to do it better. And I do things sequentially. If I'm gonna redesign a major redesign on my website, is that the same week you're coming to AutoCon? No. Is it the same week that you're gonna blast out to 50,000 people in an email blast? No. Is that the time that you're gonna remodel your, your showrooms? No. We do things sequentially because it's difficult to wrap our brains around every single thing that we can do as marketers. It's just too much information. So we only look at one thing at a time and we do that through the course of the year. And what I realized was is there's gotta be something incredibly ineffective about that type of marketing. When I saw this, it was like, wow, I've got every option that I have available to me all in one picture, and I don't have to do what I did last year. I can actually just look at this picture, and I can pick and choose. So I got value out of this, and that was the first piece of value, but it's not fusion yet. It certainly wasn't book worthy, but to me, it was cool. It went from sucks to cool. So then I thought, I'm about relationships. What is the relationship between all of the different things that we do? So what I did is I picked what I thought was the worst marketing piece that we have, which is business cards. It's a stationary necessity. We all need them. I'm not gonna point out the people in this room that over the last 48 hours, when I met them, did not have business cards available for me. You come to a trade show and you don't bring business cards. Shame, shame on you. Because we don't value business cards, because does anybody here, could anybody here attribute the number of sales that your dealership has made last year as a result of business cards? Kind of ridiculous, right? Okay, so I chose business cards because I thought it was like one of the least effective marketing tools. It's one of those things like you gotta have it. What, I'll give you another one. What's the ROI on your cell phone? It's one of the most expensive single things that you pay for each month. What's the ROI? There isn't any but you won't go an hour. If you forget your cell phone at home, you're gonna turn around and go back and get it. That's how important it is, like business cards. So then I said, okay, what else? What else can I tie this to? Well, suppose I tie it to coupons. Personally, I don't like coupons. If you sell based on quality, you don't have to sell based on price. And once you start selling based on price, you'll lose control. You spiral down. And I learned that the hard way with a previous company of my own. But let's just assume that coupons do bring people in. Service coupons are awesome. They create new customers. So now what I said is, is there a relationship between business cards and coupons? Well, unless you slipped in the shower and hit your head, there's no relationship. I mean, what if business cards and coupons? But then I said, made the assumption, what if there was? Hang on a second. What if on the back of my business card, and the back of your salespeople business cards, you say you have a little QR barcode that leads to a video on YouTube. Hi, my name is Bob. You met me, we actually touched each other legally because you're holding my business card. We probably shook hands. We have a relationship. Why don't you pick up the phone, point your phone at the other QR barcode, give me a call and let me answer every question that you've ever had about buying a new car. Would that have any effect on sales calls? Would that have any effect at all on revenue? Of course it would. It makes that relationship a trust and trust leads to revenue, we know that. But to be able to reach out to that person after they walk off of the showroom floor, off of the lot, and connect with them on a personal face-to-face. -face. Let me give you an example, the book in the back. 
Fusion Marketing Bible. There's a QR barcode on the back of the book. And if you point your smartphone at it with your scanner, it, a video of me pops up in your phone and says, Hi, my name is Lon Safko. I'm the author of the book that you're currently holding in your hand right now. You're probably trying to make a decision whether or not to buy my book. How many new ideas do you have to get out of this book to justify the cost? One new client will buy you 50 of these books. Trust me, it's worth the purchase. Do you think that has any effect whatsoever on the sales of my book? Well, of course it does. What did it cost me? Nothing. I'm doing the book anyway. I'm doing business cards. QR codes are free. So now I'm doing the end zone dance, whatever the heck, that's Cabbage Patch, I, whatever the end zone dance is. Because now I found something that nobody's seen before. What if I took this wheel and started connecting everything on the wheel? What if I started fusing together what I'm currently doing, because you can already see that it's gonna have an exponential increase, but I'm doing it anyway, so it has absolutely no additional cost. And isn't that what we're looking for in marketing? More effective marketing without any additional cost. So I'm looking at this, I said, oh, this is cool. Let me pick out something else that's crappy and see if I can turn it into something good. So I picked brochures. We all got brochures. What if on the back of your salespeople's business cards, you had a QR barcode where your product brochure popped up in living color in a PDF right in their smartphone? If that's what they're looking for, don't you want to make it easy? Or do you want to send them to your website and hope that they'll pull down the, the drop-down menus that don't work and spend the 10 minutes looking for the PDF of that brochure or put it right on the business cards? You can replace the business cards of your salespeople every 30 days. What is the cost of a business card? It's the cheapest thing that you're doing. So connect it to videos. Have each of your salespeople reach out and make videos so that they connect with these people, with your customers, your prospects. So what I realized is by using this wheel, by the way, if you buy the book, you get this, all the tools and everything that you can actually do this with your marketing management and sales department, or just build a wheel yourself, it doesn't, ma doesn't matter, but I want you to use this. So what I found was is I could take anything on this wheel, I can connect it to anything else on this wheel, we're already doing it anyway, and I could see exponential increases in the effectiveness, and it's not costing me a cent more. And I've tested this time and time and time again with companies, dealers, marketing companies. It really works. So you can imagine how excited I was that I found something that nobody else had ever seen before, this method. And I couldn't wait to do social media. That's what I do. So I took the top 20 categories in social media. Here they are. And I created this wheel on my computer. And I said, can I see the same success just by connecting different things in social media that has no logical connection? So I took, again, what I thought were the two worst marketing tools. One is Second Life. If you were here last year, and I'm glad to be back, thank you, I talked a lot about Second Life, the virtual world, the virtual environment. I have a store, two stores actually in there. I hold executive interviews, I teach university classes, and I, I, yes, I'm a cartoon avatar critter walking around in a virtual world with, it, it's pretty wild. From a marketing perspective, I'm not 100% happy with it. From a consulting, training, uh, kind of being on the cutting edge, I totally love it. Marketing, not so much. Websites, we all know what websites are. We all have them, we've been immersed in them for 15 years, not a big surprise. So I said, can I make a connection between this virtual world and my websites? No, one is, a, it, it's called a thin client. It's a piece of software that runs over here, Second Life, and my websites, there's there are different technologies. So what I did was, is I went to my websites, and I have about 14 of them, and I looked, and nowhere, nowhere on there does it say, connect with Lon in Second Life. There's 16,787,000 people using Second Life. Guarantee your prospects are in there, but I'm not here to sell you on Second Life. But what I did was, is I captured my picture, my little cartoon avatar, put it on each of my websites that said, hey, if you want to connect with Lon in Second Life, click here. 24 hours, I saw a 400% increase in traffic to my store in Second Life. What, what can you do right now? What can you tell me right now that you can go home and implement that you can see a 400% increase in traffic? And the thing was, it didn't cost me anything. I'm already doing Second Life. I'm already doing web pages. But I never thought of connecting these. That's what I'm talking about here. That's what this fusion process is. It's a system that forces you to look at all of these hidden opportunities in your marketing that you never would have thought of before. And I'm gonna take it further. 
And I'm, about now I'm going to apologize because I promise when you leave here, your brain actually will be bleeding a little bit. I'm going to give you so much data. I love this stuff. Okay, so what I did was is I started making connections. And I found that I can take everything in social, digital, media. I can take everything that I'm currently doing. I can connect it with every single thing else that I'm doing. And I can find ways where one will leverage the other. Now, here's another thing that's cool. Once you make that connection, what if you reversed it? Look at all the connections you can make in one direction. So then I said to myself, okay, in Second Life, do I talk about ExtremeDigitalMarketing.com, which is my product company where I do training videos and CDs that we have in the back? So I went to Second Life. There was no mention of the fact that you can book me for a keynote, that I do training, or that I have products. Well, how stupid is that? I'm almost embarrassed to be up here as a so-called expert and tell you that I never thought of it. So what I did was, is in my little cartoon store, I put up a big banner that said, go to Extreme Digital Marketing, and with any purchase, mention Second Life, and I'll give you a free $50 DVD, 180% increase in the first 24 hours. I'm on to something. I know that this is good, just by making these connections and these reverse connections. This is what you call fusion marketing. Now, if your brain works the same way mine does, my sympathy, first of all, goes out to you. But secondly, you, can't, I, you probably can't wait to jam them all together. What if you took the top 20 things that you can do in traditional, and you mixed it with the top 20 things that you can do in social media, and you put it on one wheel? What happens is you lose consciousness. <laughs> your brain can't do that much. The reality is, is that once you start connecting these things, by the way, every single one of these connections is a hidden opportunity in what we're already currently doing anyway. But it's so overwhelming, as you can see as this picture starts to build, that's how many opportunities there are. It's an eight with 47 zeros after it. If you looked at your existing marketing, through the new tool that I'm giving you called Fusion, you have eight with 47 zeros after it, new opportunities to allow one of your marketing tools to leverage the other. Is that insane or what? Okay, so we gotta do something about that. We, we, we can't do this. We're already overwhelmed. Geez, if I give you this, you're just gonna go in a corner, go into the fetal position and cry. So we gotta fix this. So what I realized was, is that if I wanted to write a book or tell people about fusion, this was a, a, a bad hurdle. This is something I gotta get over because it, it's, it's overwhelming. So one of the things that I realized working with companies, the first thing I do is I talk about cost of customer acquisition. And what that does generally is embarrasses the hell out of everybody in the company because nobody knows what their cost of customer acquisition is. Well, in the year 2000 so far, exactly how much did you spend on newspaper advertising and exactly how many new customers did that newspaper advertising generate and what was the revenue generated as a result? If there's anybody in this room that can give me those numbers, I'll give you a free book. Yeah, I don't see any hands. You know what? I don't know why we don't look at those numbers. They're the most important thing. Your advertising budget, you're spending more on advertising and marketing than anything else that you're currently doing, maybe second only to payroll, and maybe not. And if you don't know how that money is being spent, and if you don't know the effectiveness of how you're spending your money, why do you continue to throw so much money at it without measuring it? Today, with, the, with computers and the internet, you can measure everything. For example, I just did a direct mail piece for one of my companies, and it went out to 10,000 people, extremely high quality mail list, uh, opted in for my company, so it wasn't a bought list, never do that. And what I did is I simply created a new URL, a landing page, a web page, that only showed up in this flyer that I sent out. It cost me $15,000, because each piece cost about $1.50 with the envelope and the postage. So let's do the math again. 10,000 people, $15,000. And within the first week, I had four people come to that website spending a total of $40. Can you make that up in volume? Not so much. But you know what it taught me was, is that I was an idiot and I should have been removed as CEO from my own company because I had just for the previous three years done a direct mail piece and more than likely had the same results but I never took the time to measure it, shame on me, especially being an expert in marketing. 
So what I'm saying is, is that every single dime you spend, you should account for. There's very, very simple ways of measuring every single thing that you do. All your marketing efforts, whether it's digital or traditional. There's ways. Okay. This is the only part of this whole process that requires any effort. But if you have a dealership, you have an accounting department, make them do all the work and generate the reports for you. What I want you to do is I want you on a whiteboard, on an Excel a spreadsheet, or through reports through accounting, all I want you to do is, is identify all of the marketing campaigns that you did last year. If you had free hot dogs for the kids, if you had giveaways, whatever it was. And I want you to write those as headings, and I want you to write down all of the costs that were involved. Hard costs, soft costs, overhead costs. I mean, you know what? Put a little bit IT, telephone, electric, and lease space in those because you didn't do it from a park bench. So you still had overhead. What about your time, your staff's time? Add that to the hard costs. And then I, all I want you to do is how many new customers did your dealer create last year, your dealership? How many new customers? And then prorate the number of customers based on gut instinct, because I know you're not measuring it anyway. And what you're going to find is two numbers. One number is going to say, both numbers, by the way, are going to be OMGs. You familiar with that accounting term? Oh my god. What, what am I doing spending this amount of money to get this few customers? Or OMG, wow, I only spent this, but I got this. That right there is going to have a tremendous amount of value. But I want you to do that not only so that you can learn what's effective and what's not, and learn from now on that everything that you do should have a measuring technique built into it. But what I want you then to do is identify what's not working and stop it. Take those human and financial resources and move them over to something that could be more effective. If I would have taken that $10,000 that I spent on that one direct mail piece and I hired a person just to do social media. Could you imagine what I can do with no cost, no hard cost at all, no cost of goods for social media with a $10,000 budget? I, w I rest my case, but I didn't know that until I actually started to measure. So your cost of customer acquisition is extremely critical and so few people, so few dealers, so few management actually knows what those numbers are. Please do me a favor and just do that, and it's gonna take a little bit of effort, and I know that coming back from a, a conference like this, you have lots of things that you wanna implement, and you don't want anything that requires work, but I think the ROI on this exercise is gonna pay off. So what's gonna happen is, as it happened with me, I was able to identify what worked and what didn't, and I, and I eliminated what type of marketing was simply ineffective. I'll go back and revisit it, but for right now, I'm trying to mainstream. Okay, in the social media Bible, People look at these 20 categories, 400 pages, and I get the OMG again. I can't do all of this. Don't expect you to. This is everything that you could possibly do. Here's the book. I mean, it, it's, it's herkin. It's gigantic. But I want you to do three things that are really important. And if you're already doing it and seeing some successes, you know the three things I'm going to name. Blogging, microblogging, and social networks. Blogging is critical. It builds Google juice and link love. And let's face it, we're in Vegas. We're all here for Google juice. Link love. If you're here in Vegas for Link Love, I don't want to know about it. Google Juice is the number of indexed pages that your dealership has, so that when people are looking for a dealer in their area, you come up first, second, and third, the search engines. Link Love is the number of outside websites that are linking into you, and those are two of the three top things that Google uses to analyze where you show up on the listings. Blogging gives you those without doing any additional work. Microblogging is Twitter. That's all there is. And you call it microblogging because there's other things like Yammer and some other up and coming companies like Twitter, so I don't want to call it Twitter. 140 character, it's called microblogging. Do Twitter and social networks. Do Facebook. Be on LinkedIn. All of your executives, all of your SaaS people, mandatory that they have well filled out profiles on LinkedIn. I don't do business with anybody until I check out what their profile looks like on LinkedIn. If they don't have a profile, I'm probably not going to do business with that person because it's going to take way too much work for me to drag them kicking and screaming into the 2010s. But if they have a profile, at least I know what I got to work with. And for prospecting, LinkedIn is insane because before anybody picks up the phone and calls a customer, you can find out their passions, where they live, what you have in common, what their hot buttons are, what's important to them. So social networks. So now I've just taken this entire social media wheel and I really pared it down to only three things. But I'm gonna, I could add in a couple others. Mobile, for sure. If you're not doing mobile, go home and close your dealership down. 
because in five years it's going to happen anyway. Do mobile and videos. Go insane on YouTube with videos. And also do other ones like Tube Mogul and some of the other ones. Critical. Okay. So now assuming we're going to do those two, three, those three things and we're going to stick in a couple of other. Hey, I got your whole social media calendar down to five different things and we just pared down your traditional. Now the reason that this works is your wheel, your wheel and your wheel are going to look completely different because these choices, decisions, numbers are based on what works for you. And that isn't necessarily what's going to work for you. So when you get to this point, you have a marketing set of tools, set of strategies that's absolutely customized and designed specifically for you and nobody else. And it just happens that way out of accident. It doesn't require any extra effort. So now you say, what do we do? We connect them. We start looking. What would happen if in your newspaper you just didn't put the thumbs up, which some people don't know what the heck that is, what if you said connect with us on Facebook and we'll give you 10 bucks off your next service? Like us on Facebook, get a coupon for 10 bucks off on your next oil change. Would that increase the number of friends? Yeah, and you're doing the coupons anyway for service. So come on, give me a break. But if you don't ask people to like you, they're not going to like you. I mean, they might like you, but they're not going to like you. Follow me on Twitter, run a campaign. So the idea is, is to do what you're currently doing that you know is effective and traditional and link them and leverage them with everything that you're doing in social media and back and forth. Did you give out business cards in your dealership a month before you came here today that says, hey, I'm going to be in Vegas at Autocon 2013. If you're there, look me up. Stop by my booth. Why not? So the, the idea of fusion is, is making, pairing it down to the perfect tool set and then can, interconnecting it. Yeah, I'm going to say integrate, but you can see already this isn't just about integrated marketing. It's a lot more. Okay, now the question is, is can I take this any further? I'm glad you asked that question. Thank you very much, sir. We're going to take this thing further. There's something that's called a fractal. Anybody familiar with a, a fractal? Yeah, oh, cool. Awesome, man. Good audience. I like this. Dude, you know what a fractal is? Yeah, Mandelbrot, right? Guy Mandelbrot worked for IBM back in the 60s, created a mathematical equation that he put into a computer that actually defined every piece of computer-generated technology that we use today. It's how a tree looks, how a cloud looks, how water looks, how a mountain looks. And what it said was, is that you can start with an image. Believe me, I, I'm leaning somewhere here, so bear with me. I haven't just lost my mind. It's not necessarily the end of the day, and I'm, I'm, my blood sugar's dropping. And what it said was, is I can create this image, and if I zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, that exact same image reappears. And I could take that image and zoom in, zoom in, and the same exact image reappears. It's a self-replicating image, the closer you look at it. And if you zoom out, it works exactly the same way. Trust me, here it comes. This is why fractals are important. So I said to myself, okay, once we have this tool set, this customized, absolutely foolproof, we know that it's foolproof for us. This tool set, what can I do with it? So I said, what if I took just one of the tools? Remember I said social networks was one of the important social media tools? What if, I, if, I, if I'm creating this wheel, this marketing plan, and I'm making the assumption that social networks are important, then right now, tell me, what are the top 10 social networks are there in the world? Quick, quick, come on, you guys know it. Of course you don't know it. I don't even know it. I have to read the thing. I don't know what the top 10 are. It changes. There are different locations have uh, different accountability for uh, who participates in what networks. But if you think that social media should be part, social networks should be part of your marketing plan, why don't you know what the top 10 social networks are? For this reason, are you on Facebook? Yes. LinkedIn? Probably. Twitter? Maybe. So is everybody on, show of hands, Academy, Plaxo, one, two, Bebo. So here's where I'm going to challenge you. If you think that social networks are important, why don't you at least have a profile on the top 10 social networks? What does it cost to create a five minute free profile? Trick question, like what color was George Washington's white horse? Or when was the war of 1812? It's free. So if you think social networks are important and you don't even know what the top 10 are, then you're not taking this serious. This tool forces you to be really serious about everything that you're doing in your marketing. 
And how do you find what the top 10 network, uh, top 10 social networks? Google it. Just Google it. There's people that, I don't know whether they're ADD or autistic or something, but that's all they do is compile lists of the top 10 everything. So you look at three or four of them and you pick out what you think is the top 10. And if you think social networks is important in your business, then at least have profiles, if not participate on those networks. So then I said, okay, let's take a look at this here for a second. Wow, we, we drilled down, used this tool to look at only one of the tools that we thought was important, and we expanded it exponentially. Can I do that again? And then also interconnect, before I move on. On Facebook, are you giving people the link to follow you on Twitter? Don't just tell them you're on Twitter. If you don't put the link there, you think they're gonna take the time to look you up, to follow you? No, give them the link, put it in your email address. Make it part of your signature block. Make it as easy as possible for your customers and prospects to connect with you on every social network there is. Why not make it easy? So interconnect on LinkedIn. Do you tell them that you have a Facebook page which is totally awesome and they ought to go over and like you? In Twitter, are you tweeting out? Click here to sign up for our email blast because if you love our 140 characters, you're gonna love our whole page. We don't think that way because it's too overwhelming. This forces you to do that. So then I said, what if I can take this, and I just, I know we're going down the rabbit hole, but just ride down there with me. You're gonna love this. So I said, what if I take just one of the tools off of the social network wheel, Facebook, and I Googled what are the top 10 successes for businesses, auto dealers, on Facebook? What is best practices on Facebook? Show of hands, who knows the top 10 best practices on Facebook? If you raise your hand, you're lying, because you don't know, I don't know, because that's changing. But if you Google it, you'll get it. So here's the assumption. By using this tool and using Fractal, just drilling down, you've agreed that social networks are important to your marketing plan, but you don't know what the top 10 networks are. Now you do. You agree that Facebook is important, but you don't know what the top 10 best practices on Facebook is. Why not go through this really simple, fun process? Make it a team building exercise. The more people that you get involved in this, I, honest to goodness, it, it just is amazing if you can build a big team. Get your marketing, your management, your sales involved in this. And then start implementing what the world is telling you are the best practices in that tool. So do you see how we can actually drill down, drill down? That's called fractal fusion marketing. Yeah, I know, I'm nuts. Bear with me. Customer service, is there any dealership or company here right now that you don't consider customer service as one of the most important things that you can do? Do you consider it an expense center or part of marketing? That's a tougher question. You don't have to answer that, but I want you to give us some thought. A lot of business owners, business managers look at customer service as a cost center, not a way of generating business, not as a marketing tool. It's a marketing tool. You know the old saying, uh, Happy customer will tell between five and seven people, an unhappy customer will tell between seven and 15, which is no longer true, by the way. An unhappy customer won't tell between seven and 15, they'll tell between 70 and 150,000 people that they've had an unpleasant experience. Customer service is one of the most important marketing tools that you have in your dealership or your company. So the question is, is if customer service is part of your 2014 marketing plan, what are the 10 most best practiced um, techniques in customer service? Are you doing them all and are you doing them well or do you not even know what they are? Use this tool to drill down to make sure that all your T's are across, all your I's are dotted in customer service. And that's the power, that's the power of this tool, and that's why I'm so excited, and that's why McGraw-Hill wrote the contracts to do the book, and that's why it hit number three on Amazon already. Now, Fusion, back to Fusion. What if we took customer service and Facebook at that level and we actually fused the two together? Is your customer service reps telling the people on the telephone, go to our Facebook page for the most frequently asked questions, do you have it on your on hold message? that they can get customer service questions answered on a Facebook page. Where more people are comfortable on Facebook than they are on an 800 number. You know that. So are you using Facebook to improve your customer service? Are you using customer service to drive likes to Facebook? That's the power of merging these at this level. 
So every time you look at it from a different perspective, you create different wheels, you are creating and uncovering and discovering opportunities that you honestly never would have seen before unless you did this. Because I never did and I've been marketing my entire career. I can't believe how many new things that have been right in front of me that I didn't realize. Okay, I'm gonna give you one more concept and then we're gonna, we're gonna bring this to a close. Strategies, tactics, tools, strategies are absolutely in, in paramount to me as a, as a corporate trainer, as a keynote speaker, as, a, as an author. Matter of fact, the social media Bible title is the social media Bible. The subtitle is Tactics, Tools, and Strategies for Business Success. It's so much on my mind, it is so important to me that you have takeaways, that you can apply these concepts, that it's even the subtitle of my best-selling book. Everything that you learn here at this conference is awesome, but if you don't learn how you can apply them in your business, they're useless. So one of the most important things in creating this book and this presentation is so that I can actually show you how to apply what you've, these techniques that I've just shown you through tactics, tools, and strategies. So when I, I started writing the, the, the chapter, strategies, I was like, oh, thank God, goodness, this is gonna be the easiest chapter that I've written, because I teach this, I do this, I teach it in university classes, I got this cold. And I'm like, okay, here we go. <coughs> Ed Norton. That's for the older audience. Strategies, well, a strat if you, well, you start, in order to create, you got, there's objectives, if, if you, you develop goal, goal, the goals, and the, and, but you need the tools, to, there's tactics that you apply, and uh, honest to goodness, I was ready to hit 911 on my phone because I thought I was having a stroke. I couldn't explain it in words, but I do it all the time and it didn't seem right. So here's what happened. A, f a very close friend of mine uh, is Dr. Witt. He actually has a PhD in marketing and he teaches at six universities. He's the dean at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. And I called up Dr. Witt and I said, Gary, dude, again, dude, he, he understands, he doesn't, he's not offended. Dude, can you tell me, you, you teach marketing classes in every university, can you explain tactics, tools, and strategies? And he's like, well, yeah, 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 of course. He says, I teach this, I've actually written a book on it. Well, you know, your strategy, you start with an object, well, there's, you, you set, there's goals. He goes, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. He goes, how do I teach it in class? He says, do me a favor, meet me at the university tonight at five o'clock, I'm gonna pull every marketing book from the library, and you and I are gonna go through the appendix, and we're gonna find out what the actual definition is. And if you, I know you're thinking to yourself that it's easy, because I know that, but it ain't easy. You probably can't define it in your head, so I won't call on you, I promise. So what happened was, we went through this, and we went to the first book, another PhD, Marketing Strategies. Okay, page 263. Uh, well, there's goals, technique, there's tactic, but if you take your goal, total nonsense. So what I realized at that point is, is that if you guys are going to have good takeaways, if you're going to actually learn how to apply this, somebody better come up with a really understandable, easy definition of what tactic tools and strategies are. Okay, here it comes. This is gonna make your stay, the entire conference worthwhile. Just this one slide, you're gonna love this, it's my favorite slide. You can't tell I'm enthusiastic at all, right? First of all, strategy ain't a thing. We keep thinking that strategy is a thing. It's not, it's a synergy. It's, it's the sum of all the parts that I'm about to describe. Don't think of a strategy as a thing. First concept. Second critical concept. The term objective and goal is exactly the same. The objective and goal means what do I want my marketing to achieve for me in 2014? Exactly what am I trying to achieve? And don't cheat and say revenue or sales. That's a cop out, that's nonsense. It's gotta be more realistic. Everything that we do, you saw by the first slide, has to lead to revenue. So we gotta be more specific. Don't use that. Okay. So, it does include objectives slash goals, but we're not gonna use goal, it's an objective, and tactics and tools. Okay, so let's take a look at this. What if, when you're creating this fusion marketing plan for 2014, you created, to begin with, give me five solid objectives. Tell me five things that you want your marketing to accomplish for you over the next year. More traffic to the showroom more Yelp reviews, 
build your email list, hire customer satisfaction. I mean, the, realistically, right? You want your marketing to make those achievements. And guess what? If you can name five really solid, good goals, objectives, wouldn't that all lead to revenue? Of course it would. That's why I say, don't go to the revenue. Start at this level. And these actually were my objectives for 2013. And you can see them. Uh, I blue on blue is terrible, I apologize. Increase my email list, uh, drive more, attendance to my presentations, which during the last session, I bombed on that one. Uh, <laughs> perform more workshops. I just got back from Kuala Lumpur, Singapore, Malaysia, and Dubai, doing two-day workshops on this. And when I get back home to California, I am now off to Hong Kong, Kuala Lumpur, Milan, Florence, Rome, and then Puerto Vallarta. So I achieved that goal. And then what is the last one? Drive more traffic to my retail location, my website. Okay, so that's the things that I wanted to accomplish with my marketing expenses for the year. And I hit pretty much all of them. So, so by creating these five simple, and don't do more than that, because you won't have the resources, because you'll see why. Give me five solid objectives. Okay, now, where are we gonna get our tools? Guess what? We, that's what we've been doing up until right now. By using this fusion wheel, we've created the best, most effective, tool set from every genre, not social media expert, not digital marketing footprints, not traditional guru, but we took everything that's available, every tool that's available, ones we're comfortable with and ones we're not. We figured out what, which ones were effective, which ones were not. We reallocated human and financial resources to things that could be more effective. We completely integrated or fused all of these three major types of marketing into one comprehensive marketing plan and shouldn't it be that way? And this is the custom tool set that you designed for your dealership. And it's gonna be different from everybody else's. These are the most effective tools out of all 40 top tools that there are in the world. Now we've got our objectives. All the only thing that's missing is tactics. Look at this. Take your first objective, put it in the center of the, the SAFCO wheel, this fusion wheel, and then ask yourself the question as you move around the wheel. How is Facebook going to increase traffic to my showroom? How can I use business cards to increase traffic to my showroom? How can I use Twitter to increase traffic to my showroom? How do I use customer service to increase traffic to my showroom and go around that wheel and if you pick 20 tools and you have five objectives ladies and gentlemen you now have 100 absolutely fail-safe tactics that you can implement for your company and it's going to work better than anything that you've ever done and it's that list of those 100 perfected tactics is your strategy for next year just that simple. Isn't that just a beautiful, elegant definition of strategy? Look at this. Make the wheel, build it with your team, turn it into a team exercise. Remember, if you've got 20 people in the room at, at an average age of 40, you've got 800 years of human experience that you can bring to answering the questions that you've seen me here. I've presented this entire thing with background and everything in under an hour. It's not gonna take you much more than that to pull all of that extra success out of your marketing plan. And as you saw, you're gonna get exponential returns, but it won't cost you anything else. What more can you ask for? That's why I'm excited about this. I got some books in the back, I'll sign them. Remember, if they're autographed, they're gonna be worth a heck of a lot more after I'm dead. Also available for uh, uh, any questions that you have. And I personally, personally wanna thank you for concluding this incredible conference by you guys actually sticking around to hear me. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. So uh, a lot of uh, people stuck it out there here and uh, everybody's from the auto. Uh, in preparation for coming to a specific auto-centric uh, conference, have you noticed any specific connection between the two things that you think work especially well for the uh, automotive market? <clears throat> yeah, you know, first of all, I'll start with the general observation is that, yeah, traditional and social in particular working really well. For dealerships that haven't embraced social, 
you're losing 50% or more of your marketing ability. <clears throat> For those dealers that think that they're really going to be on cutting edge by almost eliminating their traditional marketing budget and moving everything over to social, you're shooting yourself in the foot. Because a lot of your customers are still coming in off of those newspaper ads. They're still coming in off of door hangers or cold calling and whatever. So I'm hearing a lot as I talk to the dealers. Since last year when I presented the Social Media Bible, I hear a dramatic increase in the level of awareness and the type of intelligence that people are using now in social media. Last year, it wasn't as, as widely accepted or enthu as enthusiastically embraced as I saw it this year. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to challenge all you guys, whether you're a dealer or a vendor, to remember traditional still exists, but you've got to test it because it's, it's decreasing rapidly in, in its effectiveness, especially newspaper, television, and radio. We know that. So test it. Social media is awesome. Test it. Don't go blindly into it. Run campaigns. Get metrics. Measure what you're doing. And then remember that when you leverage one against the other, you're going to see even greater results than if you're doing each one independently. But you, the, mo the most important change is how enthusiastically the dealers more so are embracing digital marketing than they, than they did just a year ago. Good question. Good Anybody question. else? There we go. Remember, free consulting. Just a quick question about QR codes. Uh, we went kind of bananas and tried using QR codes on everything and didn't see too much success. Are you finding that more people are using them now? Yeah, you know, and that's something that's also dramatically, the, the question was about QR barcodes, uh, that you, you didn't see any particular success and are more people using them. Yeah, you know, the Fortune 500 companies are estimating right now through Gartner and Forrester that about 10% of the buying population are actively understand and utilizing QR barcodes. But that number is, is like really ramping up really fast. Um, because they're in magazine articles, they're at the end of magazine articles, sometimes newspapers, sometimes advertisement. And I just saw recently that uh, Hollywood released a new movie, and you know how they put up the posters? There was nothing on it but a QR barcode. I thought, wow, that's pretty nervy to pull that off. So the answer is, you'll see limited success right now, the same as you did with Facebook, LinkedIn, and, and Twitter back in 2006. Nobody really quite got it, now we all get it. The sooner that you adapt QR barcode technology and make your customers and prospects comfortable with it being on your material, the faster it's going to take off. And if you do it and your competition isn't doing it yet, you will have a competitive advantage because it's getting better fast. But great observation. I have a question for you regarding barcodes, and um, I want to be a participant here. Is the content you send people to from the barcode? You know, we see uh, you know video taking a, a, an increasingly uh, stronger role uh, in terms of its its role in in, in conversion. Uh, yep. So combining it, where you land on something, where you have a video and the ability to click on it. But what um, have, what has your observation been in terms of okay, you're going to use this QR? When, what's creating the highest conversion or engagement? You know, the, the thing, a lot of people don't realize that QR barcodes can actually be used for a lot of different things. Uh, the, the most common is driving somebody to a URL. And a URL, of course, is a web address, and that could have a, a, a self-starting uh, video. Uh, it also can be an email sign-up. It can be um, pretty much anything, a Word doc, a coupon, a PDF, anything that you can attach to a website, you can attach to a QR code. So that's the first thing. Don't just think of it as video. It could be anything that you can attach on the, on the internet. The other thing is, is that it also, a QR barcode, just as easily converts to a telephone number. So on all of my email uh, signature blocks, I have a QR barcode. I don't want somebody fiddle freaking around trying to type in my office telephone number to call me, especially what I've noticed is, is that as I'm approaching 60, I can't read your damn numbers anymore. I can't see them, they're too small on your card. But I can certainly point my smartphone at it and have it dial your phone number. So that's something, especially for the baby boomers, is getting more and more important. So you can do telephone numbers, but you, and you can even do text messaging. If you want to send me an SMS text message, you can do that also through barcodes. Also, here's something that a lot of people don't realize. Let's suppose you create a really important piece and you got a QR barcode. Let's, let's just say it's to a video. And I hate to use it because that's what everybody thinks it is, but let's do that. Now let's suppose, a month from now, the content of the video becomes stale. 
You're like, well, I'm not reprinting $20,000 worth of brochures. Don't create the new video and just save it out to the server with the same name. That QR barcode is going to go to the same URL, but it's going to go to a brand new video. So you update the content, but you never have to update anything that you print. So conversion, I use it everywhere. And I use it as a sales tool. Every chapter in every book has a QR barcode. So when you're in chapter 19, point your phone at it and it says, hi, you're about ready to read chapter 19. Let me tell you what the most important thing about this chapter is, why I wrote it and what I didn't have time to put in the book. So I use it for everything. It's a way of communicating. Communicating builds relationships. Relationships build trust. Trust leads to revenue, period. That's a, that's a great nugget. Changing the, uh, uh, updating the content under the same name so that it still stays effective. Uh, that's, uh, that's beautiful, especially on things like business cards where you're seeing QR codes and those things. Anybody else got another question? Nobody? God, I had all these extra drink coupons for him. All right, you guys look really, really comfortable. There's, there, there are a couple of things we're going to do. One, we're going to give a big round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> 